So welcome to the June meeting of the Jaffa Club, last Sunday as usual. Gender welcome address by me, and our speaker today is Mr. Raj Rajra, a New York-based investor. So our objective, which is mainly for the benefit of people who haven't attended our meetings before, the club will facilitate, foster and support social intercourse and fellowship amongst its members. It will build a network of members and non-members that can work together, to promote the economic development of the Northern problem. So what is the club for? The club is a catalyst to help people like us connect with each other and to help people like us connect with more than entrepreneurs and business opportunities. So the reason I use the word catalyst is the club itself doesn't build any empires. The club helps other people get together and uh, do good works for the Northern economy. So we've had speakers since 2020, September 2020, and I'll just slowly leaf through this so people can see the uh, speakers that we've had. So we've had CEOs, senior partners, general managers, entrepreneurs. We had uh, the governor of the Northern Province, the former governor, Jeevan Thiagraja. We've had educationalists, Professor Alex Thirvarajan. We had the director of um, the Jaffna Teaching Hospital. We had Stephen Hall, who's re responsible, head of the Halo Trust, who was removing mines from the north, releasing land back into productive use. So now we we have Raj. Raj, do you need the screen, or will you will you just be speaking? I'm sorry. So Raj, do you do you need to take over the screen? No, no thanks. I don't need the uh, I don't need the screen. All right, good. So in that case, I will I will give the um, the floor to you, sir. So if you carry on. Okay, um, um, Wanakam, thank you for taking the time to uh, join this uh, Jaffna Club presentation. Um, when Jagan was going through the list of speakers, I could recognize at least half a dozen of you who we've uh, invested with or about to invest. So in my opinion, the Jaffna Club has done a tremendous job in connecting uh, people from all walks of life. Uh, let me start by saying that our family has done charity in Sri Lanka for over 20 years uh, in the areas of education, healthcare, women's empowerment, microfinance, so on and so forth. But the pivotal moment for me and my family was when the Aragalia started and uh, we started rethinking our strategy. And uh, what we then decided to do was to focus on creating employment and through that um, continue to do charity. So the singular focus is to create good jobs uh, in Sri Lanka and then use that as a vehicle to, um, to do charity. Um, so the past December 22, uh, my family and I went to Sri Lanka. We spent four or five weeks. We traveled all across the country just to learn what the lay of the land is and how best we can help. Um, the aha moment for me was when I was in Norelia and I got to speak to some of these tea pluckers. And I found that for six or seven hours of work, they were making 800 to 1,000 rupees a day. And their lot hadn't changed in 50 years. I also learned that some of these tea brokers, the leading tea brokers, were collecting 30, 25, 30 vintage cars. And the disparity of income and wealth was like amazing to me. 
And um, what that led to the thought that Sri Lanka is a land of the middleman. So that was my first thing. The middlemen are the ones that are making money. The farmers, the tea pluckers, the fishermen are at the mercy of this middleman. And, um, you know, there's a narrative that uh, <clears throat> things are bad only in the north and the east. But if you go to the deep south, the poverty levels are similar. The only difference is they were not bombed and didn't go through a war. So the middleman, even if you look at government, right? The guys who make the money are the guys who put the deal together. And they've got fabulously wealthy uh, because of, uh, on the backs of the uh, Sri Lankan people. So, um, you know, my, uh, my primary thought, you know, then I started exploring. It's the same story in rice. It's the same story in coconut, agriculture, fruits, so on and so forth. Um, now, focusing on the north, every day, hundreds of tons of product are taken to the south, where they are processed, packaged, exported globally, and also sent back to Jaffna for the people in the north to buy it at a higher price. So, now, I'm, again, I'm talking about Jaffna, but it's all over Sri Lanka. The producers have become economic slaves. And a few people are making a lot of money. So, um, we, um, you know, this Raj, Raj seems to have frozen at the moment. Yeah, I think his bandwidth might be low. Raj, you're, you're muted. All right, so rule number one was, we don't want to make a single rupee out of Sri Lanka. And I'll talk about that a little bit. Second rule is to focus on creating employment for youth and vulnerable women and men. Third was to... Uh, run our charitable efforts as a business, not as a handout or something like that. And I explained a little bit about that too. Um, so, you know, in my life, I've started a few businesses uh, in the US. And one of the things I do before I start any business is to literally write down what my competitive advantage is in that situation and what my weaknesses are. If you don't have a sustainable competitive business uh, or advantage, you're not going to do well. So let me start with the weaknesses as I see it. The primary weakness is me. I left Sri Lanka at the age of 11. Um, haven't uh, gone, I mean, haven't lived in Sri Lanka, haven't lived in Jaffna because I was born in Colombo, went to school in Colombo. And, um, so that is a significant weakness compared to, you know, having, if you lived and went to school in Jaffna. I do speak Tamil though. Uh, the second weakness, we, uh, we don't have an organization in Jaffna or in Sri Lanka. We do have in the Colombo, which is on the investment side, but not on the foundation side. So then you talk about how do you mitigate this? And um, the way we mitigated is we, uh, decided to form an advisory group. And in that advisory group, we have some very uh, capable um, 
Sri Lankans, two who live in Jaffna, a person who's been a CEO of several banks, major banks in Sri Lanka. Our CFO was a banker as well as CFO of a, a large public company. And then we have two uh, in New York, uh, part of Cinnamon. The common thread among all these people is a passion to help people. And um, so, <clears throat> so the advisory group today, I would say has gone from me being the biggest weakness to becoming a strength of us. And we meet regularly, we've done a bunch of things. Uh, I went back to Sri Lanka again in May and June for about six, seven weeks. And we set up, uh, set up an office in Jaffna. As I said, we hired a CFO, we've got a legal team, we've hired accountants, um, we've hired uh, staff, full-time staff, and uh, you know, met with the heads of regional banks, uh, the heads of uh, the North, so the regional banks, because they could be a good source of referrals to us in terms of opportunities. Um, so as I look at my strength, number one, we have a good advisory group with passion. Number two, we, uh, we are not looking for profit. So when you don't look for profit, your lens is very different from if you're trying to make returns. And I'm gonna talk about that because this is a key aspect of our thing. Uh, thirdly, uh, we, uh, we're not constrained by capital uh, in relation to our goals. We've invested in about 12 different entities or in the process of, and we want to invest uh, about a dozen or so every year uh, for a long period of time. Finally, we've been able to form some strategic relationships with entities like YAL IT, which I think give us, gives us a competitive um, edge in the IT sphere. So those are competitive uh, weaknesses and uh, um, trends. There are four areas that, that are of interest uh, to us. One is agriculture and fisheries. Number two is IT. Three, microfinance. And four, art and culture. Um, so we um, look at our business um, or opportunities. Uh, we've segmented into two groups. One, uh, where we're providing growth capital. One is larger companies that need money that have been set up operational for several years and are looking for growth capital. Unfortunately, in Sri Lanka right now, the bank rates are very high and many people are getting squeezed uh, by the debt levels. The second is startup for smaller companies um, which target uh, entrepreneurs. Now, in the larger companies in that sector, our strategy is to provide growth capital. We don't want equity. We think the equity should be owned 100% by the founder and the employees. We don't want profit sharing in return because that's a cumbersome thing to monitor and we don't want to get into trouble if or get into arguments if somebody puts their mother-in-law and father-in-law and their brother and sister and cats and dogs on the payroll. What we do decide, what we want is a royalty based on the incremental revenue growth. Let me explain. If a company is doing 100 million rupees a year and our capital helps them go to 200 million rupees, the incremental revenue growth because of our capital is 100 million dollars rupees. So we want a percentage of that as royalties and we will take that royalty and give it to charity in terms of education or medical care, things like that in that area. So for example, you know, we sponsored two ambulances um, in the one year area, you know, as um, uh, example of what we do in the healthcare area. 
So it's a royalty-based model. Now for the startup companies, we provide funding. We don't expect royalties. We don't expect profits. We don't expect equity. We will provide them capital till they get to cash flow break even. And then once they get to cash flow break even, if they want growth capital, then we will revert to our royalty model. So I hope, you know, if you, when we have question and answers, if you want further clarifications, I'm happy to do that. So that's the strategy. Uh, so what we have done so far in the six to seven months since we, as a family, first went to Sri Lanka, is we've invested in about a dozen uh, of provided growth capital to about a dozen companies. Some we are in the process of uh, doing the paperwork. These companies are in fruit, pro fruit processing and agriculture processing, uh, providing uh, fertilizers for livestock, cattle, um, milk processing. Uh, we are working on the coconut uh, processing uh, sector and in uh, doing microfinance for rice farmers. Uh, the rice processing uh, industry in Sri Lanka is controlled by three families who, who are in the Anuradhapura Poronarwa area, and they actually bully the farmers into uh, paying them uh, lower prices than what is available in the market. They provide financing to these farmers at 20-25%. And... Um, you know, unfortunately, in the north, there's a lack of processing factories because after many years of war, uh, relative to the output we have, we have a shortage of processing factories, and that's an area that we're very interested in. Now, on the IT side, we've invested in six companies, um, and uh, on, most of them are startup companies, and We've got many of the referrals from YAL IT. Um, we uh, are a platinum sponsor of YAL IT. We've funded uh, about 50% of their seed capital uh, fund. And we've just established a um, $5 million venture fund to uh, help entrepreneurs start IT. And the more companies that uh, are started, there'll be an ecosystem of people staying in uh, the North and you know, there'll be job opportunities for a lot of youth. So that's a strategy. Um, now, the fourth area is the arts and culture area where we've just uh, started slowly. Uh, we are investing in a company that um, is making greeting cards. We are investing um, in a company uh, that is promoting tourism in Delft Island. We just sponsored, uh, we are one of the sponsors of the first Japna night market in uh, outside Fort, which I understand was last Saturday was the first one. And I understand that was a big success. There's literally no nightlife in Japna. There were a bunch of vendors and a bunch of customers. And then we've agreed to fund a, a talented Sri Lankan filmmaker who had uh, produced two uh, hit plays that were well received in Australia and London. And now he's going to produce a, a film in Sri Lanka about the experiences of uh, the Tamil diaspora. Our goal, finally, is to... Um, set up a gallery in Jaffna for, um, to exhibit uh, Sri Lankan art, I mean, Jaffna-based Northern Tamil art. Uh, again, if you, look, if you analyze the art industry, the gallery owners make 40%. Uh, so again, an example of the middleman making lots of money on the backs of the people who work. Uh, finally, uh, if everything goes well, we'd like to do a Jaffna Literary Festival uh, for 2024 or 2025, where we can showcase 
uh, Tamil musicians, Tamil filmmakers, Tamil uh, artists. And uh, so that's, uh, that's our goal there. Now, let me talk about lessons learned uh, that I've, we've learned. Remember, in the last seven months, I've spent about three months in Sri Lanka. Number one is you have to be patient. So, um, you know, we who live in the West are relatively impatient. So that's number one. Number two, um, the, uh, it, it's very difficult to get financials or robust financials. Some of these entrepreneurs have several sets of books. You don't know which one to trust, which one not to. And so we insist uh, on understanding who the accountants are and uh, you know, try to get some information from them as well as with the entrepreneur's permission, talk to the commercial bankers who lend them money. Uh, so far, we've not been able, we've not dealt extensively with the bureaucracy uh, in the north, and we'd like to keep it that way because you know we are bringing private capital and generally doing private uh, uh, private uh, business. But I think uh, as we go to our second phase, we need to uh, engage with them more. Um, Fourthly, I think you have to uh, make your goals clear up front. What are you trying to do? And communicate it to the entrepreneur so there's no misunderstanding. Um, and then stick to your core strategy. Uh, I am not afraid to say no if it doesn't, doesn't fit our strategy. You know, too many people I find in Jaffna uh, tell me that, oh, if you say no, you're going to lose face and, you know, da, da, da. Well, that's fine. You know, I'd rather lose face than lose money by doing something dumb. Um, so those are some things I've learned. Um, and uh, finally, my current thinking after this uh, recent trip to uh, uh, the North, one is we are employing old, ineffective agricultural techniques. We need to employ new techniques. Techniques. I'll give you an example. Today, on average, a coconut tree in the North produces about 65 coconuts a year. In India, it's double that. Uh, Cow in Sri Lanka produces one and a half to two liters. I may be off by a little bit, but not too much. Whereas in India, it's almost three liters and in places like Australia and Europe, it's five to six liters a day. The rice, most of the rice in our part of the world is plain vanilla rice. We can hopefully transition to more nutritional rice. Organic farming, while it's starting, is still in its infancy. Um, so I think uh, trying to set up a center, or like, you know, they had IT parks and industrial parks to enhance agricultural yields would be a good, uh, good uh, starting point uh, for us. And then there are lots of, um, spices that grow well in the south, we haven't tested in the north, like cinnamon and things like that. I mean, Ceylon, Ceylon cinnamon has a good world-class reputation. So um, we, uh, every day we get more optimistic. We see a lot of, uh, a lot of business plans. Um, we like to uh, have a template, internal template where they have to fill up you know, fill their last two years finance, the next year's projections, who the bankers are, what the ownership of the company is, and that's been excruciatingly slow uh, relative to what we are used to in uh, the West. So uh, Jagan told me to keep my uh, comments to about 30 minutes. I think I have one more minute uh, to get to eight o'clock. The clock has stuck eight in New York, so 
Jagan, it's over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Raj. I think uh, we can now open the floor to questions. Um, would you put your hand up? Does everyone know uh, how to put their hands up? I can see Dr. Surendra Kumar. Or should I say, Professor Surin? Surin, do you want to ask a question? You're muted, Surin. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm Sir Rajaratam. I'm, I'm uh, Professor Indra Kumar, uh, medical dean, Faculty of Medicine, Jaffna. Uh, I want to uh, give you two two important uh, questions uh, because uh, I first thing is uh, now you correctly mentioned, but we know that our youths they have two problem. One thing is they lost their hope uh, due to many many reasons, and then they uh, are expecting. Uh, and so it say this one not work and things won't work like that. The second thing is they don't have an imagination or this lack of imagination. So when they do like that and where they can end and all those kind of a thing. So it may be uh, important for them to, uh, one thing is support and this culture of entrepreneurship to start even during their childhood and to be trained them and also they need some type of exposure, you know, that working with uh, <laughs> different places, uh, even uh, some of the exposure even to India is good for them to plan uh, their thing. So uh, how that you can help in that uh, regard. The second thing is uh, <clears throat> mainly most of this business, even all business, as you correctly mentioned, uh, earlier that in uh, Northern, uh, Northern East uh, <laughs> uh, leading, on this uh, business, but uh, after this uh, third year of war and a lot, lot of business people also left. So here then uh, people are really struggling for the uh, uh, working capital, uh, even this capital and also working capital. Uh, so uh, many institutions, I'm associated with the two hospitals and they are just providing a lot of employment opportunities, but uh, still they are struggling to run. Uh, because high interest rate and things working capital. So how your uh, initiative can help and then people to uh, get that working capital uh, and to do the business. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you. I mean, you have to appreciate the fact that these youth people that you're talking about have gone through horrendous trauma right over the last 30 years. And so you have to cut them to some slack. Um, I uh, I was pleasantly surprised, you know, before I went to Sri Lanka um, in December to reassess our uh, endeavors, I was tremendously, I heard that everybody's lazy, everybody's on drugs. This is a narrative that you hear from outside, you know, but if you really look at it relative to the rest of the country, it's not that much different, right? Because again, I don't know, but I am I've been told that the drugs are being uh, distributed by the powers that be. Okay, whether it's, I don't know whether it's the army, the police, Navy, I don't know, but that is what I've been told. But it's no different in the South too, maybe a little more in the North. So I think we have to um, provide avenues for the youth, whether it's sports, arts, culture, to keep them occupied. We have done uh, a lot of work in the Vadamarachi area, which, you know, my father is from Point Pitru, Alwai, which is a town south of, or village south of uh, Point Pitru, in after school uh, tuition uh, with Hartley College, Methodist Girls College, and Nelly Central. And the results are amazing in terms of their acceptance to university and all that. And then we uh, provide uh, educational support. We have not extended it so far beyond the Vadamarachi area because we have to sort of allocate where our, uh, where our interests are. But I think keeping the uh, youth engaged, uh, like a sports program, you know, one of the things we've discussed is to create, um, and there is, but create, put more money into cricket and soccer, which seem to be you know, sports that we are, uh, the youth are interested in. In terms of um, working capital, that's what we are producing. That's what we are providing to all these companies we've invested in. Working capital, but not free. We want a 
percentage of the incremental revenues. Because remember, if you're an entrepreneur today and you have to borrow from the bank at 20%, I don't know of too many company, uh, too many businesses where you can make a sustainable um, living paying the bank 20%. And it's not the bank's fault because their cost of capital has also gone up. So um, we are trying to do that now. We are frankly constrained by lack of not capital, but manpower. We have six formal people on our advisory group. We have two others that are working with us mainly on the IT side. And, um, you know, um, I would love to work with like-minded people who can take a certain vertical, whether it's art or, you know, um, IT and expand the efforts. I also have, uh, you know, built a home in uh, Jaffna. To, we're going to spend about five to six, five months a year in Jaffna to keep uh, driving this process. Uh, you can't do this, I don't think, remotely. And uh, so, yeah, but those are all uh, challenges that, uh, you know, we need to figure out. And the other thing is this, you have to understand, in the, I spent my life mainly as a tech investor. In Silicon Valley, uh, the bulk of startups fail. We hear about the Googles and the Facebooks and you know those companies, Apples and all that, but there are so many, com more companies fail than succeed. So if you go in with the attitude that every one of your investments is going to be successful, you're going to be sorely disappointed and you'll walk away. So you you know you have to go in there saying, listen, it's better to try than not try at all. Try and fail. But you know, I've been I'm pretty tenacious about these things. And so we 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 have staying power and we'll stay and fight as much as we can. Thank you, Raj. Now I'm I'm gonna make a lot of enemies today because I'm going to be very brutal in terms of keeping questions short. We have uh, seven people with their hands up. So can you please keep your question short and give Raj a little more time to speak? Yeah. So uh, Bala in, in London, please ask your yeah. question. Um, uh, hello, right. Uh, my, my name is Bala. I got, um, started off back in, right here in, in 1983, um, when I was 18 years old. Uh, I've been, started my offshore company in India back in 98, till 2013. From 2010 till up till today, um, I'm, I invested and I'm very successful. I'm getting a return on investment. Uh, in the, every month I had to, to spend 25,000, 20 to 25,000 pounds per year, uh, per month, my apologies, per month. Qu quarter of a million pounds I'm investing back in Sri Lanka. I, I'm based in Trinko Mali and Jeffna. I was all the buildings are mine. I constructed it and all that. My uh, the reason I've been kicked out of India, I couldn't compete with TCS and uh, Infosys. All my staffs come along, work for me, and they once they trade, then they move to TCS and Infosys. Um, here I don't HCL is a bit of challenging for me, but that I have I have one. I'm paying very high salary for my senior developers, three hundred thousand rupees, and retaining them. I'm very I got potential. My dream is to like. Indian info, something like I, I, IIT or something. I want my dream is to build OIIT, Oyster Institute of Information Technology, and I want the elite forces for my I got projects uh, uh, and I have ten million pounds worth of assets in here in UK. I'm successful in that, but I come to the stage. Um, uh, really, I, I never until now I never seek for any investment. All the all the funds are. Profit on which uh, in the, my profit I paid off all the things, um, but now I for me to build um, Oyster Institute of Information Technology to produce uh, elite developers is cost involved. There's no guarantee. I, I develop my see, few of my developers went to Canada and they seek for so I'm not getting any return on it, return on my investment. I. Kind of I'm sorry, Bala, 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 can I quickly? Yeah. Now, yeah. with Raj's permission, 
I will um, circulate his email with your permission. <coughs> Can you make ask a question? Because at the moment, yeah. Oh, the question that. question is, is: Is it worth a profile like mine? So is it worth claiming fund from public fund without ownership being tarnished or uh, without? Um, uh, I, I want the, I want I want to own the ownership of my company. I don't want to take public fund or charitable fund to invest this fund. Is it right or wrong thing to do? Okay, I never borrowed any money from anybody else in the past. Yes, so number one, congr congratulations on your success. But I rule number one for me was not to make money out of Sri Lanka or the northern province or the south. I know how to make money in the US. And so my lens is very different from somebody who wants to, who looks at it from a profit standpoint, right? Now, in the last two months or three months, uh, they've opened uh, uh, um, IT uh, university, licensing the uh, process from the SLIT. Um, it is uh, being sponsored by a Canadian uh, businessman called uh, Indy Padmanada. Um, they've got some land near KKS, and uh, I think they're trying to, the initial class, it's all IT, four-year program. Initial class is about 500 uh, students. Um, the, uh, and the staff, the professors are coming from this, South SLIT, you know, the Dean is a Tamil gentleman. So now he is looking at it as a for-profit institution. And if you send me your email, I can connect you with him and you can uh, discuss it. The reason I wanted to start Oyster Institute of Information Technology. Okay, I have Allah, to... Sorry, Pala, Pala. I'm going to move on to the next question. Okay. Um, okay. I will send you, as Rajas agreed, I'll send you, uh, or please send me your email. Yeah. I, I have your email, but I'll remind me, I'll send your email to Raj. Can okay. I, thank you. Thank you, Bala. Can okay. I, He's muted. Kurt, muted. Uh, you're muted. Kurt, can you unmute it, please? Okay. Okay. Uh, Raj, that's for some, um, I, I don't want to be condescending, but it's a, it's an excellent uh, presentation. And um, uh, my views are, are congruent with your views and Jagan's views. And um, I really feel that we need to lift Jaffna. Jaffna has a lot of potential and the diaspora is a strength. So I agree with you in everything what you have sent uh, and also the lesson you have learned it's everything moves so slowly in Jaffna how can we motivate our people to move a bit faster because I've studied at St. John's College Jaffna the diaspora Johnians are so fired up they are celebrating 200 years and so passionate, so passionate. They will do anything for St. John's. So how can we invoke that sort of uh, sentiment in Jaffna? So we can do anything for Jaffna. We are from Jaffna, right? And the other thing that I want to say is, you know, you already mentioned that you are, going, you are focusing on art, culture, technology, and I have an office in Jaffna as well, you know, in Jagan's building. But, uh, but you know, Jagan is very involved in art, culture, and everything. You know, when the money flows in, then they have to spend the money. They have to go to restaurants, enjoy life. So now with the COVID-19, I find people are becoming more lazy. They don't dress up to go to work. They, they, they come in my their home clothes. So it's some sort of slackness is happening. And um, so um, drugs, and you also mentioned about drugs, you know, 
I was in New York in 1984. And I know that I was in Bronx. There were pimping on one side and drugs were selling on the other side and the police was oblivious so, to anything. What is, your, what is your question? My question is, what, 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 how can we invoke um, uh, passion? Passion, that's what I'm asking. It, no, we but can think, spend money, we can throw money. No, 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 I think, intelligent, I think intelligent uh, charity run like a business is the answer. Now, one, one thought is to get all the St. Johnians and the Central College people and start a sovereign fund like Singapore did or Vietnam and run by people who, are, who live there, who have the background to invest and are serious now and give it to them. We from the outside can't do that because we're not in the, in the know-how. Right, um, and if each diaspora person can give whatever they can afford to give, you have a sizable pool of capital. Now, I know there'll be people say suspicious and say somebody is putting their wife on the payroll and you know driving a bigger car than they should and all that. But that's you know in life you can't optimize everything. Right, if we lose twenty five percent of the capital due to inefficiencies. But the 75% makes a difference. Then that's a useful uh, risk reward, in my opinion. Right? But the diaspora is one of our biggest strengths. Just look at the achievement of Tamil people, not just in business, but in medicine, in um, you know, pro, uh, education. It's just amazing relative to the number of people we are. You know, Pakistan. Bangladesh, maybe India is close. I mean, but they are, you know, 50 times our size, right? The, the, the impact of the diaspora is our strength. And it's also why, um, you know, the government is reaching out to the diaspora to help rebuild Sri Lanka. They know they have capital. They know that uh, they've worked hard. And remember, we have... Um, uh, a period of about 15 years because the people who had the most connection to Sri Lanka are the ones who left, who lived there. My children, unfortunately, or fortunately, think of Sri Lanka as a nice place to go on vacation, great beaches, and, you know, no. I'm lucky in the sense that they have, on their own, studied Tamil. Okay, so they, and because of the charity we've done, they want to get involved in it, but that's I think the exception rather than the rule, right? Because in the US, we are not uh, concentrated like in Canada around Toronto or in England, you know, we are a big country and there are Tamils all over the place. So I think um, if we can get, I mean, there are so many prominent Tamils in Sri Lanka and they can form a group and invest capital that's funded by us. You know, I would definitely participate because right now I feel that my bandwidth is constrained by people. Yeah. People who are like-minded people, not, not looking at uh, the North as a profit center, but as a, you know, as a way to help uplift, as you said, our people, right? And, you know, I don't know, but last I checked, when I die, I can't take my money with me. Right, so uh, I might as well spend it, at least in the US, they have estate taxes. So 50% of your net worth over a certain number goes to the government. So rather than give it to the government, I'd like to give it to people that I care about. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm happy to uh, fund it to some extent, but if a whole bunch of us, I mean, if you look at how well the diaspora has done, it, it is an amazing success story. 30 years. Diaspora has done it in 30 years. And there are about 52 people uh, watching this um, um, uh, Zoom meeting today. If we can, fact, both, uh, if we me, can and it'll be a great thing. Thank you. Thank that, you, Raj. That's a big tribute to Jagan. I think it's a tribute to you, Raj. But um, now, uh, Daniel is next. Can you please go directly to your question? There are seven people 
Um, and I don't think we'll have time for any more. So Daniel, please go directly to your question. Yeah, so I, I have sort of three, but I'll rattle through them. Um, the first one goes to what you've been talking about already. Um, what are your thoughts on addressing that capability gap that you mentioned? So for example, you're able to invest capital, but you're lacking, I guess, management bandwidth or the ability to effectively deploy that on the ground by the sounds of it. Um, I guess the context is I am similar to you. I come from like a private equity background in Sydney. Um, I went to Sri Lanka five years ago, set up a business and realized I want to do more there and actually execute on the ground. But the return on time for me personally is it's not commensurate. So, you know, working in Sydney, um, you know, you're going to get a substantially higher return. And so a, a challenge for me is how do you address that where we can potentially bring some of the capability overseas um, back into Sri Lanka so it can sort of get on the ground and drive a lot of that value. I think there's a substantial benefit there. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. so can we'll start can, with can I ask you, Daniel, you said you had three questions. Can you limit it to two? Yeah. So, yeah. So then the second one is, um, you mentioned uh, there's a there's a middleman taking advantage dynamic in Sri Lanka. I guess keen to understand your thoughts on the structural reasons for that, why why that's happening, and I guess how you prevent that from happening longer term. Yes. Yeah, so the first question is, you know, if you look at Sri Lanka as a return on your money or return on your time, it's a huge albatross around your neck because you're not going to meet your hurdle rate that you could get in the West. Right. So I am. I've taken that off the table. Right? For example, uh, this year, my fund is up, our fund, uh, we are a family office, is up 30% uh, year to date. So that's in six months, right? There's no business in Sri Lanka I know that I can get 30% return on my capital. Now, the good thing about 30% return on, on my capital is I might have more capital to do the things I want to do. Right? So that's one. Um, what's your second question, sorry? Oh, the middleman, right? Yeah. The middleman concept started with corrupt government officials giving contracts to their relatives and friends. They, I don't want to name names, but you know, the ex-president's uh, family dominates the rice processing and rice uh, packaging. Uh, industries. Now, what they do is they give the farmers loans at 20% plus. Farmers, farmers need this loan during the uh, cultivation period. Just before harvest, they come and ask for their money back. And the farmers don't have the capital, so they pay the farmers, let's say, 100 rupees uh, per kilo when the market price is 104 rupees. So they keep strangling, strangling you so that the farmer is always indebted to these third party guys. And this story goes on and on and on, right? So what have we done? Working with uh, some people in Kalinochi, we've committed uh, half a million dollars to provide farmers low cost, you know, sub 4% or 3%. So that they can tell these middlemen from Anuradhapura and Polanarwa to go to hell. Now the fear psychosis sets in. People say, "Oh, you're going to take take these gun guys on. They are mafia. They are gundas and all that, right?" But to me, for a person like me, that is a challenge that I want to do, right? And there are people brave enough in uh, Kalinochi, um, then you know, we are going to do this because we don't back down. As I said, look at the success of our community, right? When we are not encumbered or we've given the freedom to, uh, so you can't say the Tamil community in the Western world is hardworking and in Jaffna is not. I don't buy that. It's just that the experiences have been different and they're dealing with so many survival issues, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't have all the answers. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it tenaciously and fearlessly. And let's see where the ball ends, you know. But again, I'm not speaking for other people, but if we are looking at it to return on time, return on money, return on, I would look at it as return on empathy and return on passion. 
and return on, uh, I don't know, compassion, right? And to me, every, when I came back from Sri Lanka this time, I spent three, six weeks there. I was in such a high because we were making progress one step at a time. And, you know, we provided growth capital in the process to 12 entities. Yeah. And hopefully we'll do 50 in the next five years. Yeah. And uh, maybe my children might say that I'm a good guy at some point. So that's the payoff I see. Okay, thank you, Raj. Um, now, Lasantha asked for a quick comment, but Lasantha, you're second in line, so I'm going straight to Tam. Tam is uh, in Toronto. Tam, again, can you make your question quick and direct, please? Uh, yes, I have uh, two questions, Raj. Uh, one is, uh, do you have any plans to invest in uh, sea cucumber farming? If, if so, uh, how uh, do you have any plans to mitigate uh, the environmental potential environmental damages that it, it, uh, it, it is going to cause. The number two question is that uh, the uh, severely shortage of nurses in Jaffna, the Jaffna teaching hospital itself has 180 nurses shortage. Do you have any plans to start some kind of nursing colleges or healthcare related uh, colleges uh, to provide staff uh, necessary uh, for other industries, these are two. No. So, Lasanta, um, very on a high level, no. we've looked at sea cucumbers, but have not really dived deep into it. Right. In terms of the healthcare and the nurses, um, I think we have we're right here the head of the Jaffna Hospital. Um, I think there are two issues. From a, one is a cultural issue that um, in Sri Lanka, men don't want to be nurses. In New York, at least 30% of the nurses in hospitals are men. And then there's this thing about nursing is not a dignified job. But those are just, you know, um, high level uh, sweeping statements. But uh, the third issue that I learned when we did some digging into this is that the nurses unions are very strong. So if you start a private nursing school to teach people, you don't get accredited easily. You don't get recognized. Um, and I'm sure, you know, Dr. Satyamuthi can give you some uh, insights into that offline, but if there's an opportunity, I would really look at it very, very seriously. Okay, thank you, Raj. Thank you. Lasantha, again, please make your yes, question. Um, uh, yeah, thanks, Raj. And then, uh, as you said correctly, so the nurses are trained by only the um, uh, hospital attached colleges and the universities uh, outside uh, not yet allowed by the Sri Lanka Medical Council. So if there is any uh, permission, if the permissions to the outsiders, so um, you know they should uh, you know after training they should be you know taken into the health ministry. If such situation is there, then uh, you know you know it's possible to train outside. Otherwise, uh, you know, no point in uh, train uh, outside. Uh, as uh, Rajana said, uh, especially the unions in the other people, they are more vigilant. Uh, they don't allow uh, people outside. Uh, like even, you know, nurses were trained in India after coming here. The medical council is, uh, uh, their nursing council is uh, struggling to give certification to work here. Um, so maybe now due to this crisis and the other problem, because nurses are now going to Singapore and the Europe for new jobs from the Ministry of Health, it means from the hospital. So now shortages are more felt now, shortages are more. So government is thinking now, if the you know, government allow, then it's possible. Otherwise, um, uh, still we have a problem. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Jagan. Thanks a lot. Um, uh, Mr. Raj, Lasanta, Lasanta, uh, Lasanta, just one question. Just call me Raj, please. If yeah. you have a point of view on sea cucumbers, uh, sea cucumbers, and you want to, uh, you know, work together with us, then we are most we are we're looking uh, for opportunities. Mm. Okay, Raj. Just I just understand. 
Uh, that was Tam, Tam Sivivasan in Toronto, who asked about the CU funders. Oh, okay. Um, this is Lasantha yeah. in Colombia. Yeah. Hi, Raj. Um, um, you know, your, your talk was music to my ears. You know, I am from Colombo, but uh, deeply committed to assist the people in the north, and I've been going once a month and doing my little bit uh, with the people, uh, to, uh, traveling to the north and doing my bit, and Jagan knows uh, what I do. Uh, what I wanted to tell you was, uh, my, my whole thing is to, uh, solidarity from the south. So if you require any kind of thing, you know, I'm, my personal background is in microfinance, but, you know, rice milling, whatever you need, we, uh, you know, I'll be more than happy to come on board and help you. I also understand that you and I, we both went to St. Thomas Prep School. So, you know, you uh, please look me up, Lanka Lara, I'm uh, Avanka Lanka Foundation, and I'll be more than happy. And actually, for me personally, this is a wonderful day because what you spoke was just music to my ears. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much, Lasata, and I'll get your contacts from Jagan. I mean, one of the reasons I wanted to, I was reluctant to do this uh, Jaffna Club uh, first when Jagan asked me, and then I relented after I came back from Sri Lanka, because I think if we can gather a group of like-minded people. Of course. Um, but I also don't want, you know, when over the 20 years when we've done charity, we've done it across the country, right? And uh, so I just don't want to, uh, at least from a personal standpoint, you know, we are talking uh, with some cinnamon growers in Balapitiya, uh, right. in the South. Uh, um, now, I think 80% of my uh, funding and efforts would be in the North because the North went through a huge war. Of course, the of south, course. Deep South didn't, right? But these middlemen are the, damn um, i don't know what the word is uh, they're strangling the yes definitely we are strangling the farmers and if we are self sufficient in agri in food fisheries and food then we have a solid base with which to launch it and other you know i mean look at some of the it companies in the south that are so successful definitely yeah but i think, thank you, you know, also, also, the, this is a great time because the center, the government is weak. They are bankrupt. Yes, yes. They are being watched carefully by the IMF, the Human Rights Commission of the UN, uh, India, uh, US. Definitely. And so this... they, they can't get away with some of the nonsense that they got away with over the last uh, several years. Definitely. So I think this is a good time for all patriotic Sri Lankans to really um, figure out with clarity what they want to do. And, you know, there are 101 reasons why not to do it, right? And in my opinion, in my way of thinking, there's only one reason why I'm doing it. And the reason is because I want to do it and it's my money. <laughs> and, you know, uh, that's it. I want to do it yeah. and you know, and do it intelligently. It has to fit in with the framework of agriculture, IT, uh, microfinance, and art and culture. So. Definitely. Okay, thank, thank you. And thank you, Lasantha. Sean. Yeah, thanks. Um, Raj, you, uh, extending this uh, middleman concept about an unfair distribution of wealth, if you don't take an equity position within a company, um, how do you ensure that there's not an unfair distribution of wealth within each of your organizations? Okay, it's a good question. And let me tell you, I want the entrepreneurs to make money because if they make money, they will employ more people. But they're making money not because they're a middleman, but because they're actually building businesses, whether it's IT, whether it's in farming and so on and so forth. If they build these businesses successfully, they employ more people. Those people spend the money in the North, the whole multiplier effect of the economy. How I get paid for my capital is okay. through the royalty on incremental revenue. Now, if these companies don't grow and they're oh, flat, oh, I don't make any money. Or oh, our organization oh, doesn't make it. 
if their revenues go down, we don't get a return on our capital. So we're taking uh, somewhat of a risk. But I am, I'm a capitalist. I believe that those who build companies and grow employment and help the economy should get yes, rewarded. But if you're sitting there bullying people, using your trucks and you know buying tea at low prices and auctioning them off and not giving back oh, to one of the people I admire, and I think he may be on the call here, is was a CEO of a tea broking firm. He realized he made his he was successful because of the tea planters, I mean tea pluckers. He actually relocated up country and he's working with these uh, tea pluckers to uplift their lives. And I'm really honored to be part of that journey as a, as a donor. So those types of things make me very, very happy. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Sean and Rock. Uh, Prithvi, it's your go. And again, uh, please uh, make your question direct. Can you hear and, me? Uh, Can you hear me yeah. now? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, I'm Prithvi Viraj. I'm um, heading uh, Humedica. It's a humanitarian organization. I have three things. Thank you, Raj. Uh, your real, real. I, I appreciate your realism, as well as the looking for the attitude, mindset, attitude of competitive advantage, and all those things. So the reason I'm under my first question is about this whole mindset change, um, because while uh, while understanding the fact that that uh, North has gone through quite a lot of serious uh, situation, but the whole idea of entitlement mindset, uh, especially the, the young people or whatever the thing, more like an entitlement mindset, is there any way uh, uh, you will be able to facilitate a kind of a third generation diaspora community involvement uh, in Sri Lankan uh, north situation, north and east, I'm talking about, northeast uh, five districts. So uh, north and east, especially the third generation of diaspora community, as you rightly pointed out, uh, they, uh, I mean, you can't blame them, but somewhere down the line, they also, they have got opportunities to 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 some other learn new things and skills things and all those things. In some way, you'll be able to facilitate skill sharing thing with the north, that is number one. Yeah. Right. You're making a speech. Yeah. Can you get the question? Yeah. Yeah. The question is, will you be able to engage uh, the third generation diaspora community yeah. uh, to yeah. be connected through through uh, through skill sharing kind of, thing, not for money or anything like that. Basically, yeah. skill sharing to change mindset of the people. Number two, in Delta Island, there is a huge wealth of medicinal plants. More than 60% of the wild plants are medicinal plants. So there's a huge wealth actually lying there in the Delta Island. Is there any possibility for you also to really somehow the facilitate or somehow the uh, discuss about it? Because there's a huge potential there. Thank you. Thanks. A lot. Okay. So let me, um, I've thought about this. How do you engage the next generation? And the people who've done, I mean, the race or the group that's done it really well is the Israelis. What they do is they, um, they offer summer internships for uh, Jewish people to go to Israel, spend the summer there and live in the kibbutz or live in Israel. And if you're interested in uh, medicine, you go and uh, internship with the hospital. So there's a connection. The other thing is, you know, we, um, we provided growth capital to a company called EDUS, which does online uh, education. And recently in a meeting, we suggested that they teach Tamil, spoken Tamil, to the diaspora kids, not written or, you know, uh, reading. And they, I think, uh, told us that within, you know, uh, I don't know, 24 lessons or 18 lessons, they're able to teach spoken Tamil. That's a start. But offering internships, even if it's a, you know for a nominal amount to people in the West, children in the West to go back. I mean, it's been very, very successful uh, in the U.S. by the Jewish people. 
and even third and fourth generation Jewish people still talk about the Holocaust and things like that. So we need to have an awareness of our history and be able to give a bridge for these people to easily come to Sri Lanka, spend a summer. I mean, my three kids came and spent a summer and worked in Sri Lanka, and they have that connection to that. The Delft Island, I first time I'm hearing about the medicinal uh, value, but that's clearly something if there is, we should, uh, you know, exploit. I understand that cinnamon has medicinal value and almost, you know, a lot of plants that are grown either have organic, you know, if you do organically or medicinal value. And so those are things, you know, remember, I've been at this only for six or seven months. Uh, seriously. And so this is, you know, this is a start of what I hope will be a journey that all of us can join and, uh, you know, help our people. Okay, thank you, Raj. Uh, Tusita. Yeah, hi. Thank you very much, Raj, for your, the stimulating session. Uh, I have two questions, actually. I'm personally a marketer by profession who's now committed to support other small businesses. I'm part of the Sri Lanka's National Women's Chamber of Industry and Commerce. And uh, two months ago, we started a group in the north where we got we are trying to uh, encourage MSMEs and also some of the, uh, the large organizations run by women uh, to come on board so that we can help them build greater capacity, uh, get engaged in policy advocacy work and all that. Ours is a not-for-profit uh, organization, so there is nothing that is coming in for us. We are all volunteers. Uh, Jagan is aware of this. One is, well, my question is actually, can we, uh, maybe there, be, there could be some women who might be able to uh, fit your criteria. If so, can we appeal? And then the second question is, you were talking about charities which are unprofessionally. I'm part of two foundations, but of course they, both those work uh, not only in the North, but all over the island. One, cha one foundation handles uh, cancer. We run a transit home for cancer patients at Mahadagama, uh, completely free. The second one is we run a, a call center to support mental health issues across the island through a co call counselor service and uh, people can call from anywhere, a free call, and talk to a trained counselor. I mean, suicide rates are very high in Sri Lanka right now, so these are different issues that we have. And then the other foundation is working with children of, with disability. 20% of the children born in Sri Lanka is, has some form of a disability. I'm just asking you if we uh, can connect would you consider these two? I mean, go through your normal evaluation process by all means. These are two uh, great organizations supporting Sri Lankans and uh, addressing needs that the government is not addressing. So can we get in touch with you for support? Yeah, I mean, let me give you the short answer and then give you a longer answer. The short answer is yes. The longer answer is we have another charity called Truth to Power, which focuses on women that's run by my sister, Vadani, who was with USAID for 30 years and has relocated to Colombo. Um, we have uh, backed um, palmera.org, do you know them? The Australian organization um, that uh, works with women. Aparna is yeah. running that. Yeah, Aparna is running that. I've met Aparna in New York, Vadani spent a lot of time and we just committed, um, I think half a million dollars over a period of time, two or three years, to help them. We've also worked with another doctor um, from Jaffna, who's done some work with disabled women. And uh, we are funding his uh, program as well. So it's in our, um, in our uh, thought process, but it's run in a different charity called Truth to Power. We have three charities. Cinnamon Global, Serendip Foundation, and Truth to Power. And the reason we do it like silos is because it gives a total focus uh, for those people who run those things. Okay, thank you, Raj. So, Susitha, um, I can put you in touch with Raj's sister, 
Is that okay, Raj? Yeah, if you can CC me, I think I carry a little more influence with my sister than you do. So <laughs> just CC me and I will tell her to uh, do the right thing. Thanks, Jake, right. and thanks, Raj. Thanks Thank for the question. Prasad, please. Uh, hi. Hi, Raj. Uh, hi, this is Prasant from 3Xs Labs. Uh, I'm based with Jaffna. So, yeah, yeah. Have, uh, so uh, thank you for listening. To, I mean, uh, get you know, uh, the vision of your uh, investments and uh, activities. So I have two uh, questions or maybe uh, comments or some feedback. So in terms of uh, your character, that you are investing on the musicians, sports, and uh, movie makers, and those will reduce the... Uh, bad habits in the youth. So uh, I'm completely uh, accepting that. So we have so many grounds for soccer and crickets and uh, extra, I mean, outdoor activities. But uh, when it comes to indoor games, so we have limited <laughs> badminton courts and uh, centers. So my question is, are you uh, investing any of those indoor game setups, anything? Uh, second one. So uh, in terms of the buildings in Jaffna, the commercial building, um, in terms of park, IT park or anything like that. So I understand that there's a building is uh, happening uh, in, uh, in by the Indian Cultural Fund or something, but uh, it's 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 in the word uh, more than five years or six years, but uh, there would be a better uh, opportunity to create an IT park in Jaffna or so, around Jaffna. So these are two of my uh, questions or my feedback. All right. So... Prasant, thank you for giving us the opportunity to invest with you, and we are excited. Thank you so much. Um, so, uh, your first question is activities, right? And we have set up a small group to look at sports in the north and in the, in the northern province. Um, and so that's in its early stages, and we have not really talked about uh, indoor. You're talking badminton and chess and things like table tennis and things yeah. like that, right? Yeah, I, we have not really uh, explored that, but you know, it's a good idea. As I said, we are constrained by manpower. Yeah, you know, we have, you know, eight advice, six advisors, two who are de facto advisors, and we we have a bunch of other people. But this is why my wife and I uh, want to come and spend four or five months in uh, Jaffna a year and set up these things. It doesn't happen via Zoom or it doesn't happen by, you know, telephone. You really have to, you know, make it happen. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Raj. Now the last question, thank you, Prasan. Uh, yeah. Vasi in Australia. Uh, Raj, my, I have two questions. Raj? Yes. Raj, my name is Vasi Rajadurai. My the first question is: uh, There are many diaspora people, people who have a lot of money. They are afraid to bring their money into Sri Lanka, right? Do you have you thought of having a kind of a fund where people can trust you, or you can have a team like Mr. Indrajit Kumar Swami opponent for the team where people can bring the money and invest? That's the first question. Second question is, uh, Mr. Raj, uh, that you have been a successful man in stock exchange and so on and so forth. Do you have any plans to transfer your knowledge to our young people, Tamils or Sinhalese or Muslim in Sri Lanka? Do you have any plans? Thank you. Okay, so the first plan I alluded to, which is to set up a sovereign fund like thing, run by people who have investment acumen, who can understand businesses and, uh, you know, um, uh, invest effectively. Uh, you know, I know Indujit. I went to university with him uh, many, many years ago. He was doing PhD when I was an undergraduate, and he's an amazing guy, man of integrity, and could easily be the person that has the trust of everybody. And he could be a chairman of that fund if he's willing to do it. Um, but I, I my where I, where where he falls short is this has to be a full time job in the north you can't sit in london or new york and do it right now about myself and the stock market i 
think my core competency is to understand businesses and then see whether they're fairly valued relative to what it's trading in the public market. It's not figuring out is a stock cheap or high or whether it's going to go down. It's understanding what is chat GBT, who are the players who are going to benefit? Is NVIDIA or is it going to be Microsoft or, you know, really understanding. That's what I enjoy doing. And I spend most of my time analyzing and breaking down business and investing in the uh, public markets. I mean, our fund, we have a family office. We invest in uh, real estate, venture capital, private equity, and public securities. That's really the gamut. But somebody like Indigit has tremendous respect and is a man of integrity and uh, you know just a wonderful human being. He could be like the chairman of an entity like that because he has uh, credibility with both the government and the uh, Tamil people. And I can't vouch for him. I've known him for, for years. I have actually sent a copy of this DT. You must be listening now. I don't know. Oh, you sent a copy to him? Yeah, why not? He's probably watching okay. the ashes or something. Like that. <laughs> I don't know. Fingers yeah, crossed. But anyway, right? I think that we should, I fundamentally think this, but I'm not going to wait for it to happen. I think we should fundamentally pool our resources, trust each other, and say, look, if each of us puts, I don't know what, even a nominal amount, you know, and say, look, let's give it a try. I know we have the intellectual capacity. I know we work hard. This is not just Tamil, Sri Lankans. And I know that we can make a difference if the capital is patient. But if you're looking for 20% return every year for the next five years, then you know you should uh, oh, do that in the okay, West. Yeah. Uh, where are you, Australia? I'm Australia. Um, Raj, I have a project. Chitcoin is my project. Based on no, chip funds. Basti, basti. I'll cut you off there. Now, if you want, I can put you directly in touch with Raj so you can do that offline. Uh, Vasi is a very active guy uh, in, I can't remember, Sydney or somewhere down south. Um, yeah. So, uh, very interesting to speak with. But uh, we can do that offline. So, for, for now, um, Raj, I'm going to thank you for that this amazing um, session. I think everybody has had got an enormous insight in what your objectives are here which are actually unique uh, in terms of, of what I've seen uh, from the diaspora. You know, uh, I, just met I, don't think, I don't think I have a monopoly on brains or insights. This is one man's thoughts. And I'm not going to wait for us to raise a fund or things like that. I would love to have somebody, I mean, to invest in a fund like that because I think it will be helpful rather than subtractive, right? But in the meantime, I know that if we have 15 Tamils, we'll have 20 opinions. So rather than um, you know deal through that bureaucracy, I just wanted, you know, I'm in a man in a hurry because I'm in my mid 60s now, right? And uh, so I just want to make things happen. And if I'm successful, it's okay. If I fail, then my bad, right? But it's not going to be for want of uh, effort or, you know, whatever. Yeah, no, thank you. And you will have met a number of people here uh, who are actively investing, running businesses uh, in, the, in the North. So I think uh, we all would like to thank you. I would like to thank you. And we will now uh, move on to the- on, Jagan, one more thing. I want to give you a standing ovation for organizing the Jaffna Club, so because I've met a lot of people through you, so I'm going to start the process of giving you a standing wish. Thank you. Oh, you're being shy for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Congratulations, Jahan, and thank you, Raj. You made thank the you. day for all of us. Kauri Mahendra oh, thank you. from uh -huh. Sri Lanka, Jaffna. Okay. Thank you. Nice. Looking forward to seeing you in person. I was in New York, but I missed you. Next time. Okay. All right, next time. Okay, Thank the you. final thing. Okay. It's, it's been one year since we last um, paid our subscriptions. Absolutely. So I uh, reminders paid a year ago. <laughs>
wants to join, if they can email me, the criteria is you have to be actively investing, actively running a, a company in the north. And that will give you voting rights, rights to be officers. But anyone can join these meetings. It doesn't stop anyone from joining these meetings because the purpose of the club is to connect people. If no one has any other business, then I'm going to uh, I'll give people one 30 seconds, well, 10 seconds to say they have any other business. Very good. So I will now say, have a good breakfast, have a good lunch, have a good tea, have a good dinner, and for our friends in Australia tonight. Thanks, again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Raj. Thank you so much.